Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we are going to look at an op-amp based precision clipper limiter. Now if you haven't already looked at the video that's on the discrete diode version of this circuit, I strongly suggest you take a look at that first. The whole point of a clipper limiter is to prevent the signal from getting too large. Now that might cause damage to a following circuit. It might just overload it and create problems down the line. Um, whatever it is, we're going to prevent the signal from going beyond a certain threshold. So let's take a look at a very basic inverting amplifier here, right? So we have just a 1k and a 1k. Uh, this is going to give us a gain of negative 1. It's just an inverting buffer. I have an 11 volt input. So if we were to do just a basic transient analysis on this, right? Nothing fancy. We just see the input, which is green, right? There's our 11 volt peak and the load, which is the inverted gain of one. Well, let's just say that, you know, further down the line, wherever here, the, you know, is after the load here, um, that signal would be so large that it would damage that circuit. It would create some kind of problem. And I need to prevent that from happening. You know, most of the time, maybe the input signal isn't this big. Maybe the input signal is only a volt or two. Everything works great. But occasionally, uh, maybe accidentally, we get a very large potential. And I want to, again, prevent problems down the road. So what do we do? One possibility is this. Same circuit. I've simply strapped a couple of Zener diodes across the feedback resistor position. Now these particular diodes, I've just kind of pulled these out, you know, out of the database, nothing fancy, no particular reason why I chose them. The 5231B is a 5.1 volt Zener. So here is what's going to happen. If your input signal is relatively low, below 5 volts peak, these are open. You know, these are configured back to back. So one is going to be uh, reverse biased and one of, his, one of them is going to be forward biased if the signal is large enough. But if it's not, you know, in other words, if it's below the Zener potential, then this is basically an open path. And all we see is RF over RI. In other words, gain of one, what we saw before. But if the signal gets too big, like it is here, 11 volts peak, what will wind up happening is one of these devices will go into Zener conduction while the other one is forward biased. So on the positive half wave, right, current's coming in like this, and remember the current into the op amp is negligible. This point would be our virtual ground. So we do have current flowing through RF, but if this voltage gets big enough, and again, because I only have a gain of one here, that's basically what the input voltage is. When this gets large enough, there's a path for current flow this way. Right, so if I had, let's say, you know, a signal that was a little over 5 volts, you know, I'm getting up around, you know, 5.4, 5.5, what ends up happening is this first Zener, Z1, is going to start to forward bias, give us a 0.7 volt drop. Then Z2 will start to go into Zener conduction. Now, initially, you know, there's a little curve on this thing. There's a knee on this curve. So it, it's not like it goes from open to Zener conduction like a switch immediately. You know, there's a little bit of a transition there. There's a little bit of a, a fuzz, a little gray area. But this thing starts to go into Zener conduction. Eventually, once it hits solid Zener conduction, this thing is going to be sitting here at 5.1 volts, plus to minus in this direction. Now, you already have plus to minus in that, dire in that same direction on Z1 because it's forward biased. Well, that's 5.8 volts. So you're going to lock the voltage across RF, which happens to equal the voltage of the load, to 5.8 volts, right? Everybody shares this output node, and then they're either sharing ground or virtual ground, right? So basically these three things, four if you count this as two components, right? Um, those three branches, let's look at it that way, are basically in parallel. They're effectively in parallel because they have the same voltage. So any further increase in voltage will be met by a further decrease in the internal resistance of Z2 because that's in Zener conduction, right? This will just conduct the extra current this way. 
Now, when you go negative, the exact opposite happens. What's going to happen is the current's going to be flowing in this direction, right? You're going to have a positive output. Remember, it's an inverting amplifier. So Z2 is going to turn on forward 0.7 volts. Z1 will go into Zener conduction, but they're identical diodes. So that will also be 5.1, meaning 5.8. All right. Okay. So let's do a little transient analysis on here and see what we get. Okay. Let's put up the legend. So our Green is our VN, and we can see here's the output, V load. It's definitely inverted. Let's check these amplitudes. It looks like it's truncated, shall we say. And we are getting, we're supposed to be getting 5.8 in the ideal case. We're getting a little over 5.5 negative there. And again, a little over 5.5 positive over here. So why isn't it exactly 5.8? Well, like I said, you know, these zeners don't just immediately turn on. Further, the forward bias doesn't have to be exactly 0.7. Um, it's going to be around that value. So you can kind of play with these a little bit uh, to determine an appropriate limit value for your particular application, right? Otherwise, it's just a nice sign. You know, if we had a smaller input signal, this would just be working fine. You know, just to prove the point here, um, you know, let's just change this so that it's below the Zener potential. I'm just going to change this to 2 volts. All right, so it's a 2 volt peak. And we'll rerun this transient analysis. All right, and there you go. Nice 2 volt input and output. You know, just as expected. No problem. It's only when we get a large, we get a large signal that we get the limit. Okay, so the next question is, hey, I've got two zeners. Uh, can I, you know, do I have to have them be the same value? Can I do an asymmetrical limit? And the answer is yes, you can do an asymmetrical limit. So what I've done here is I've replaced one of these diodes with uh, a 5227B, which is only a 3.6 volt. So now on the positive, right, current's coming in like this, Z1 gets forward biased, Z2 gets the inversion, right? Gets, excuse me, gets the uh, uh, Zener version of this. So we have 0.7 plus 3.6, 4.3, 4.3 volts, but this is an inverting amplifier, right? At the output, negative 4.3 is what we're expecting. On the positive version of the output, in other words, a negative input, all right, we're going the other way, and it'll be the 5231 that's in Zener conduction, and we'll see what we saw in the first circuit. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, now the other thing I've done, I forgot to mention, is I did crank up the value of RF. So this has a much higher gain. You can do this. There's nothing that says you have to have a gain of 1 on this thing. You know, if I had a small signal this would be working fine as long as the output wasn't up to these levels. Um, the one thing this will do is it, if you're trying to square up the wave, is it will make these edges much faster. Right? You can see that the, the approach on these is much sharper than um, you know, what we had before. Right? Notice that is following the nice sign and this because the, the signal is trying to go way the heck up here. Right, it's much steeper. But let's check out these amplitudes. That's the important thing. And we were looking for uh, like somewhere around 4.3, if I remember. And we are getting 4.23 change, right? Somewhere around there on the negative end. And we should be getting what we had before. All right, so we're getting about 5.7 volts on the positive peak for this. All right, so that's looking pretty good. All right. And again, just to sort of prove the case, if we put in a relatively small signal, small enough that it doesn't exceed those limits, right? So in this case, maybe 0.1 volts, all right? So 0.1 times the gain of 10 would give us 1 volt. That would be underneath both of these limits. And there you go, all right? You've got your uh, undistorted, unclipped load signal just being you know, 10 times what the input is. All right. 
Okay, beautiful. So we can play with this. We can put in different values of uh, Zener, right? We can change the gain if we want. It's just a nice way of clipping or limiting the signal. The only thing I really need to add to this is if you're, if you're looking for what's called an audio limiter, like an audio compressor limiter, that's not this circuit. A limiter, an audio limiter, is a specialized amplifier. It's a controlled gain amplifier. The gain is actually controlled by the size of the input signal. That's, a, that's a, quite a bit different than what we're looking at here. This is sort of a, um, you can almost think of it as a hard limiter with, with uh, infinitely fast um, turn on and turn off times. But um, this is a different kind of circuit. This is more, let's call it kind of like a safety valve so that the signal doesn't get so large that, like I said, we have overloading issues or possible damage further on down the line. All right. So again, you can change these values. You can have gain. Uh, off you go, right? It's, it's great. So any uh, questions, leave them in the comment area and have a good one.